I heard that word at least. One, we have one item that it, it's good to insert at this point that's a little bit out of the agenda, and I'd like to just ask for a suspension of the rules to um, allow um, Conrad to share some thoughts. Yeah, and I am... Um, is that okay, everyone? Mm-hmm. So after um, thinking about sort of my, my thoughts um, following from last week's election results, I, I asked um, some of my colleagues on the board and reached out to staff if, um, for permission to, to reflect on my thoughts on our role as an institution in this larger context of um, that's been created after our divisive presidential election. So I'd like to read something that I prepared and um, and hope that it reflects very well upon everybody that I've worked with uh, throughout my 40 plus years on this board. Um, so, you know, after a pretty brutal election, um, you know, many folks are taking stock to reflect on their work in response to the condition of our larger civic conversation and um, thanks for the permission to, to make this statement. But So I contribute my time serving on this board because it's an authentic demonstration of local control, governmental transparency, and probity. Beyond that, our statutory authority draws from the implicit strength, sustainability, and resilience of urban communities. Um, as many folks in the room know, uh, redevelopment authorities were created to reverse the deteriorating condition of America's cities. And the federal role in this has declined significantly since they were created, so that today most city planning and community investment efforts are primarily local in, um, in activity. Thus, you know, what we've been doing over the past um, few years through our strategic planning process has been to work to redefine the role of a redevelopment authority in a progressive and economically healthy municipality, which is quite different than you know what we were doing over 60 years ago, which is dealing with blighted cities. But importantly, and I think this is a key point, um, you know, this body's operating principles exhibit an inclusive character that values diversity and honors our country's pluralistic conditions and traditions. I'd like to emphasize that. All are welcome, all are listened to, and we actually enjoy these conversations. So last week's election results have re-revealed that this approach to public administration has many critics, possibly due to a lack of the type of faithful public engagement we practice here in our community in Cambridge. So you know, we, we face challenges as a market, um, interest in housing and commercial development that threatens the diversity of land uses in our community's sense of stability. So you know, these same pressures that are sort of impacting the larger conversation at the national level are right here at home as well. But I think that the CRA's support of the Kendall Square Innovation District symbolizes the Cambridge community's esteem for science, innovate, and, and invention. And I'm proud that solutions to global issues from disease prevention to climate change mitigation are a core aspect of our city's identity. So, um, you know, in just wrapping this up, I, I believe that we remain focused on the value of cities as centers for collaboration, intersections of cultural diversity, catalysts for economic advancement, and models for sustainable development. I strongly believe that we must remain vigilant in our efforts to continue demonstrating the civic value and virtue of the CRA's approach and serve as an influential example of the institutional merits of this style of government. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.